Good afternoon and uh, to all of you. Let me start thanking you, uh, thanking very much IGAD. And I'm doing very genuinely and very profoundly because they take very seriously one of the biggest concerns that happened in this part of the world in uh, several decades. I had uh, the, I don't know if, I don't know if to say the privilege or the quite almost unbearable duty of managing the FAO program in Somalia in 2011 in the plane of the famine, and it was difficult. It was difficult, not, not, not particularly for the logistics, not particularly for uh, the complexity of the response. It was difficult because uh, with the colleagues of WFP and with the colleagues of UNICEF, we were setting, sitting together and we were saying to each other, we knew it. We knew it. We understood it, and 80% of what happened was highly predictable. So what did we do wrong? And I think it's a genuine question, which is very difficult to answer in an environment where people die. That's why I'm saying that it's almost unbearable as a, a personal feeling to it. Now, I'm saying that I'm thanking very much IGAT for the effort because I think IGAT take very seriously the answer to that problem. And the answer was something that a lot of us knows. Uh, I'm one of these persons which is privileged to be in this part of the world since more than 20 years. So I, I, I see the things probably with a slightly different view than others. But the reality is that we know here that talking about humanitarian or development as a separate entity was making very little sense. We know that there are long-term issues that need to be addressed exactly in this area where there is not condition for long-term issues. So how we are dealing with it? And that comes out, the Idris response that, uh, the, the, that um, he got put in place, which I think was an incredible good and rapid effort. And actually, John, let me congratulate again you and all the team there because you really guys did something serious. And they were very fast. They were really very fast in trying to bring together planning, together with the member country, together with the senior management, to make this happening. Now, one of the things that I bring back, and I know that it's not necessary of the speaker that the statement that I'm going to make, but one of the things that I bring back and will continue to drive some of our decision, it was a nice statement of the representative of DuPont during the um, uh, presentation and the, the keynote speech two, two uh, days ago, which was that what you can't measure, you can't do. What you can measure, you can do it better. And I think that was our concern when we start to see the things happening. And when the things were happening, we got worried because we are not we in the sense of FAO, but we in the sense of the broad community. I mean, the Secretary of IGAD start to tell us Look, I'm responsible for hundreds of millions of dollars spent in this region, and frankly, I'm not sure that I have the numbers to tell whoever is putting the money and whoever in the member country asks us that to tell them how we are using this money. Are we using the money for the best or for the worst of the people? If another drought happens, we're going to have still 12, 13, 14 million, whatever figures you want to use, of people affected. Will be these people the same one or will be different people? And what, we, what make these people at risk of being affected? These are all very simple questions, apparently. In reality, extremely complex to manage if you want to give a real, serious response. So in that perspective, uh, we decided with a, a group of partner mind-like to help IGAT to establish their capacity to manage these responses. And that's how the Resilience Analysis Unit that John Caballo was talking about came together. We want to be as UN to be strong in supporting uh, the organization, but they want also that that platform is a platform open to all the people which have the possible best idea to take this measurement in place. And at the same time, we have the, the challenge, and that's why I'm sharing with you, that we have to start to give numbers to the same, to the same questions. We, have to, we cannot wait other three years to give some of these answers. So under this pressure, the three agencies, actually the four agencies, which are, uh, as, as was said by John, WFP, UNICEF, UNDP, and FAO, plus a number of other agencies, which thanks to also the presence here, we are asking to come on board and do work with us, uh, will move forward to try to make sure that we have numbers available, and at the same time, we, have, we are able to create the space to know more. Because now comes my last past, part of the reflection, before having the privilege of serving as a manager in FAO, I was serving as a senior economist and uh, I was doing modeling, analysis. So I understand what this topic is about. Now, one thing that I would have really come to my mind towards the end of this conference, don't trust the people that tell you that they can measure everything. It doesn't happen. 
believe me, I know it's a personal experience, it's not necessarily a fair statement, but it's not true. You can't measure everything. Actually, you can measure very few things. Now, the honest partnership is exactly about those people that tell each other honestly, look, the way that I measure these things, it measures only these three or four things. You are much better than me in measuring the other. Can we talk to each other and put together our capacity of measuring? Now, based on that discussion, we can do an incredible impact in a very short time. If we're not having that honest discussion, we'll be continuous of competition of real people which do measurement, people which pretend to do measurement, people which say that because they've talked with the farmer one day, that, that opinion is more important than the other, people that count the number of the, of the legs of the cow, divide by two, and then define the number of the legs of the pastoralist. Don't trust them. <laughs> Don't trust them. It doesn't work like that. It's complicated, it takes time. You have to think through. And so that I'm saying, because I think that we are in an incredible moment. We cannot fail. We are four, three years from 2011, too much time is even passed. So we are really in need to be credible. And there is continuous noises of a number of possible drought to set up, which I'm not saying that is happening, but is scaring because if it's not happening this year, it may come next year. And now, the minister which is sitting next to me uh, may ask tomorrow to me and to my organization, sorry, why you haven't predicted when the information was there? And I don't want to be in that situation which I don't have an answer. So for me, it's critical in this moment in time to make sure that we create the capacity not to provide all the answer, but to provide that foundation of answer which makes possible to make some decision. And I also would like to, and I'm really also expecting, I mean, it's really a call of interest on partners which are sitting here and are sitting in other parts of the conference room, is a call of interest in saying, we, if we are extremely good with what we're measuring between the four agency plus the other partners which are joining, if we are extremely good, we probably measure 30% of what is needed. That tell us that 70% is missing. Between you, I'm sure that there is a quite a number of people which can contribute that to that 70% that is missing. Let's make sure that we talk to each other, we create an open partnership in that, because that will help to make sure that in this region, a drought will not have the same effect than before, and will be very difficult to hold the responsibility another time to say what I was saying at the, be at the beginning. We knew it, but we didn't do the right thing. Thank you.